time now for the exchange. Joining us live now is Sophie Kuyate, a community navigator at the nonprofit organization African Communities Together. For years, it has been connecting African uh, immigrants to key legal employment and government services, and it also helps them feel at home as well. Um, Sophie, thank you so much for being with us. So here we have a situation whereby New York City is saying, listen, we're at capacity. We don't have any more rooms. We don't have the funding. What is the solution here? Because obviously a lot of these migrants who have been through treacherous journeys um, coming from their home countries to get to the United States, they need to be housed. They need to be housed uh, immediately. What is the solution? Thank you, Zen, for having me you know, with you today. Uh, like you said, they're going through so much, leaving their home country. So the solution today has to be higher than the city because the federal literally bring, you know, the border crisis into New York City. So, yes, New Yorker, you know, as you know, we're welcoming, you know, uh, um, you know, people, but at a certain, you know, point. So now we need to move from this emergency, you know, crisis to something more permanent, you know, because, you know, those people that you see, they're being treated like they, they are animals. That's it. We cannot say any words. So the federal need to help. We need funding from the federal. You have many great organizations on the ground. I'm t thinking about all our sister organizations who work with us, you know, welcoming those African migrants to the city. But if we don't have the federal, you know, who's, you know, stepping in with, you know, helping us with, you know, founding, we're never going to find the solution. You know, the city needs to help the state and definitely the federal. Right. I mean, that's been that's been what what Erica Adams has said, you know, that the New York City needs federal funding, it also needs state funding as well. So just talk to us a bit more about your organization, ACT African Communities Together. What's your role in terms of helping these migrants uh, adjust? So African Communities Together, uh, it's Af an, um, non-profit organization, like you said, of uh, African um, immigrants. And what we do is welcome our, you know, people to, um, you know, to the city. We help them navigate, you know, uh, uh, the city. And we also give them advice, but it's, you know, like their right and also their obligation, how to survive mm -hmm. in the city. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? They need to know. Knowing where the, you know, the the process is going to be is very important for them, but we need communication for us is the number one, and let them know you you hear we are a big family and that's what they need, because they being traumatized, you know, mental health is a big problem. Mm -hmm. We have people calling us, telling us, you know, that it's it's too hard for them, and the process is too long, and at the end at the end of the day, what they need. It's legal support, you know, and that's what we need to keep in mind. Because if they're coming here, it's to seek, you know, asylum. Yeah. So that's why we say, you know, that, that why they're here, you know. So we need absolutely the city, the state, and the federal to step in, you know. And just walk us through you know, the, the journey that many of these migrants have been on to get to the United States. A lot of them who are from African countries, they may mm -hmm. take a flight to somewhere in South America where they don't mm -hmm. necessarily need a visa to get to. And right. then they travel through multiple countries in order to right. get to the border. Just give us a sense. I mean, obviously, everyone's journey is different, but just give us a sense yeah. of what many of them have gone through to get here. So in general, most, a lot of them so come, like you said, to a country where they don't need a visa to, to flu. And then they, they're going to walk through, it can be 13 different uh, um, uh, South American countries to get to, the, to Mexico and then to get to the border. So, but you know, what happened between, you know, all this, you know, uh, uh, during the road is very traumatized for them because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they saw a lot. They saw a lot. So when they're coming here, you know, they're pretty happy to be here. But the problem is, so we opened the city and we said, 
okay, welcome, you know, to the city, and we're going to help you to do this and that. And then they're handing, like, not having, you know, this, what we, we promised them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the big problem. So in African communities together, we try, you know, to be first to, to have a here for them, to listen to the, you know, what they have to, you know, because a lot of them need to talk to be mm -hmm, honest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they need mm -hmm. to, you know, be able to express a little bit, you know, what they have inside. So we need to listen to them. And we are guide, we guide for them. So we guide them, you know, through, through the process. Yeah, because you mentioned that mental health is a big problem, but I mean, also, so is sleeping on the streets. The fact that so many of them have had to sleep on the streets uh, because New York City is basically saying that it's at capacity and there's no room left. Clearly, there does need to be some kind of a long-term solution. Sophie Kuyate, thank you so much for being on the program.